from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an Con radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Um, I don't know why uh, a state like California has a reputation for being so cutting edge and so ahead of its time all the time. Because sometimes we are just in the stony. I mean, there is no doubt about it that uh, you might as well have Fred Flintstone as the governor here because uh, that's how far behind we are. And in one way we are behind the times is that we uh, still use the antiquated ways of making people pay child support by letting a woman say, tag, your it, and taking her word on it, and that's that. And then giving a half-hearted attempt to find the real father. No, there's no attempt to find the real father. To find the guy she fingered as the father. And if they can't find him after, uh, you know, sending some letter out uh, to some bogus address, that's it. We're going to find the guy. We're going to uh, clamp down on his paycheck. We're going to take away his driver's license. We're going to come after him every possible way. It's tyranny. It's wrong. And... um I want anybody out there who is likely to contact a politician in the state of California to pay attention to what I'm about to present to you. Because in the state of Tennessee, a a bill is being proposed that would require, require, do you hear me? Require DNA evidence before you can say that somebody's the father of a child. It would be required. Mandatory testing. Now, uh, joining us is the man who is sponsoring this bill. He is Tennessee House Representative G.A. Hardaway. He's a Democrat, and he represents District 92, which is part of Shelby County, uh, Midtown and Inner City, Memphis, and a bunch of other communities that, unless you live in the Memphis area, you haven't heard about. But uh, I want you to hear about G.A. Hardaway and his bill, and he joins us right now. Uh, uh, Representative Hardaway, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. How are you? And to your listening audience. I am great, and thank you so much for taking this time uh, to spend with us. What you are proposing is what I have been proposing in California for years, but of course we haven't done anything about it. Tell us the specifics of your bill. Well, this bill is pretty simple. We know that we've got uh, nationally the estimate uh, ranges, but nationally uh, the common uh, accepted numbers say that 10 out of 100 uh, fathers running around here thinking that their uh, children are theirs are mistaken, that uh, that's the error rate on the paternity identification. Down in uh, Tennessee, the numbers are even uh, worse when you look at a specific category of paternity identification cases within the jurisdiction of the Department of Human Services. They've got certain uh, Title 40 uh, cases that they pursue, and the error rate, once the DNA testing is done on paternity identification, can range up to 27%. And this is information that's coming straight out of the Tennessean uh, on the data they've collected. My build is very simple. We know that grown folks aren't always honest with each other. We just don't want the child to have to live that lie and suffer the consequences of grown folks uh, being foolish. 
So this law would require that there was mandatory testing, DNA testing at birth of any father that's been identified or accused of, uh, uh, depending on how favorable you look at it, of being the father right there at the hospital before the name goes on the birth certificate, that father would uh, have to match up DNA with the baby. Real simple. Now, um, every time I've had this conversation, I hear from certain individuals who I suspect are county employees here in Los Angeles County. I hear from certain individuals who, who say that would be bad, that wouldn't be in the best interest of the child. Who is the opposition to your bill? Um, really, it would be individuals who are being selfish, uh, looking after uh, themselves or not wanting to bear the little inconvenience or the little embarrassment uh, that some women say they would have if they had to uh, submit to that type of testing before uh, listing a father on the uh, birth certificate. It's mostly individuals who are being selfish. If we're going to ever acknowledge that that uh, uh, general principle that's accepted uh, when we talk about law that affects children, the best interest of the child, quote-unquote, then this is a good place to start. We've got two adults. We've got a baby. We've got two adults who are saying, well, you're, you're uh, embarrassing me or I'm uncomfortable. That little slight discomfort or uh, temporary uh, moment of uh, embarrassment is little compensation to pay for a lifetime for the child being absolutely sure of, of his or her heritage. If we quit looking after our own selfish interests and think about that child and a lifetime that uh, the child would have without having uh, situations pop up where mommy gets mad at dad, oh, by the way, Billy isn't yours. Uh, Billy Jr. isn't yours. And then Billy Jr. is in the next room hearing it. It's sad. I've got instances, uh, one, one is real pitiful. This guy says he drove all, all day to come to the Capitol to meet with me. He says that his birth mother went into the hospital under a false identity and that it was done so that she could make use of the insurance and then give up the baby uh, to the mother whom uh, she was uh, impersonating. So from Jump Street, this guy's been living a lie, and he has absolutely no records to go back to start looking. If there had been a DNA test and the father, who was the, uh, the husband of this woman, it was identified that uh, he wasn't the true father, then, of course, the revelation would have also come up that uh, this wasn't the true mother. So it can work in more than one situation. I've heard from uh, second wives, I've heard from girlfriends, grandmothers, individuals all over the, the, uh, the spectrum who are saying that, look, I'd like to have that certainty in my mind so that I know that nothing's going to pop up 10 years, 15 years down the road and it's going to emotionally traumatize the child. That's what this bill brings. And I've had women say, well, you're saying that all women are whores. No, I'm not. But when I have women that say, well, uh, I'm married, I don't need that test, and yet we know that infidelity uh, in marriages is just rampant. And if we need any clarification on that, we merely need to watch the news and uh, see some of the elected officials around the country confessing. So I don't believe that anyone has a legitimate argument other than one that says they're looking after their own uh, self-interest. But if we're looking after the best interest of the child, then we need to 100 percent uh, be sure that that name that goes on the birth certificate is right and use that DNA testing. We have technology uh, where we don't have to guess at this. Let's use it for the benefit of children. Our guest is sponsoring a bill in the state of Tennessee that would mandate DNA testing uh, for every live birth. Is that every live birth or every live birth of a couple that is unmarried? My record uh, would reflect every live birth. And that's so that we don't create two different classes of women 
where one is suspect and, and the other is not. Because it's sad, but we don't live in the kind of culture where uh, marriage necessarily means monogamous. So instead of having women classed in the two separate uh, entities where one is suspect and one is not, I want all children uh, to know that uh, there's that certainty factor there. And we can be certain within 99.999%. So let's do that. Our guest is G.A. Hardaway. He is a Democratic representative of the Tennessee House and and also uh, the sponsor of this bill we're talking about here. Uh, now, I can't speak for Tennessee, uh, Representative Hardaway, but I can uh, speak as a taxpayer in the state of California and in the county of Los Angeles. It's my belief that one of the primary reasons we do not have mandatory DNA testing is because in a state as big as this, there's a little fiefdom that has developed. There is a bureaucracy that has developed. People make their living chasing innocent people and taking their money and transferring their wealth to women who defraud. And uh, there is a vested interest in keeping things the way they are. Do you see that all over the country? Do you see that, for example, where you are, or is it a different story? Oh, uh, absolutely. You're You're right on track industry which has sprung up around uh, these custody issues, uh, child support collection issues, all of these industries are fighting to keep uh, this from happening because they know that their dollars are going to be short down the road if we have that kind of certainty now. And you've got the, uh, this is just one segment of the the legislation that I'm uh, proposing over the uh, the next few years, we had, for instance, a couple of years ago, the uh, parenting plan. Parenting plan is a piece of legislation that required both parents to sit down. This only applied to uh, uh, those who were divorcing initially, and now applies to uh, all, uh, whether you were married or not. You sit down and you develop what's called a parenting plan. And the real trick here is that the initial uh, language comes from each parent. So instead of a judge saying, uh, look, I'm going to develop this court order and tell you how much time you're going to spend with your child, tell you uh, who's going to pay for education, I'm going to tell you when the child is going to spend time in that house and uh, who has the child on uh, Christmas and all those personal things, instead of the judge dictating it, then we have the two grown folks who had that baby sit down and work it out. Now, what this did was to establish the ability to communicate between the parents during an emotionally turbulent time. Usually what happens is uh, when you're talking about separating or getting a divorce and you're arguing over uh, everything material, and you have that emotional uh, uh, strain on you. We have people who put the baby last, put the children last. The parenting plan says you got to put the child first. Once you work that out, you find that, yeah, I actually can talk to the other parent. That channel of communication is open, and it serves the child well going down the road. Now, what happened was the trial lawyers and the bar uh, associations fought us on that because it took, building hours away from them. If you don't have parents in court fighting all the time, then the lawyers make less money. And this is the same situation. Anytime we have a law that says that parents need to work things out and uh, uh, be efficient in the way that we approach disputes, then it takes money away from lawyers. It takes money uh, away from uh, the psychologists and so-called counselors and, and et cetera. And it keeps it in the pockets of the parents where it can be spent on the, uh, the children for the benefit of the family. Who supposedly like come that. first, which is what politicians love to tell us, but then they do the exact opposite. And the other thing that bothers me is the fact that there are children walking around who don't know their own medical histories. They don't know that they could be uh, prone to things like uh, Tay-Sachs disease or sickle cell anemia or colon cancer or heart disease or any number of other problems that can develop in life. Well, not only uh, do you need to look at some of these genetic uh, diseases for the uh, just because 
they can be passed on by themselves. But take, for, for instance, sickle cell. You can be a carrier, which means you don't need to marry another carrier, okay? Or else you take a chance of your children carrying uh, the disease. You have two people with the trait, but not the, the, the disease. So if they marry, then you're going to end up with children likely to carry the disease. So there's all kind of reasons that children need to know who their parents are and uh, know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And they all come back to the best interest of the child. But parents are uh, concerned right now because we know we're going to have, if the numbers hold up statistically, and you're going to have 10 uh, times out of 100, you're going to have a lie being told, and then it's going to be revealed and the cover pulled off of it uh, at the birth. It might straighten up some of these situations, and those numbers might go down. So in short, your opposition, I'm sure there's a number of women uh, who, uh, you know, are a little too uh, frisky and don't want that being revealed. But I, the, as far as organized opposition is concerned, it's people who work for these county agencies that have been created to collect this money, and it's lawyers. That's, that's who's opposed to it. Well, absolutely, and we've got uh, probably one of your favorite groups, uh, National Organization of Women. Uh, have decided that they want to come up here and lobby against it. Oh, of course they do. Uh, oh, yeah, of course they do. Uh, we have a couple of people who want to talk to you, if you don't mind, Representative Hardaway, uh, because a lot of people have uh, comments or questions, but we'll just take a couple because I know you're short on time. Let me get Mel. Mel, you're on the Tom Likas Show with Tennessee House Representative G.A. Hardaway. How you doing, Mr. Hardaway? Uh, Afternoon, I, you man. are my hero, sir. Next to Tom Likas, you are my hero. Uh, some like 21 years ago, a girl accused me of getting her pregnant. Turns out that she was a promiscuous woman who a week prior had sex with about three different people, including her boyfriend. And I found this after the fact. When the baby was born, I went to the hospital. I said, I rolled up my sleeve and I said, I want a DNA test and I want it down. And she goes, no, you don't have to. I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put down the father unknown, and I witnessed it. It was done that way, and about once a year for about 18, about 16 years, I kept going back and asking, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure, because I didn't want to get uh, tagged for back child support or anything like that. And to this day, thank God, uh, hopefully I'm not the father. Hmm. Well, and it's a shame that you had to put this kind of time in. And it's not that the, the child doesn't deserve a father, but the child deserves the the, uh, the, the right father. And it just traumatizes the child if the child is of age to where he's, he or she is attached uh, to the father. So it's just a shame that you're uh, dragged through this mess. And one of the other problems that we have is that the laws are so fuzzy about this paternity fraud. When a woman knows that she's misled the father and outright lied and com committed fraud, it's difficult to get laws in place that will address this without you jumping through a bunch of hoops and having a, an extremely high uh, burden of proof. But what I would want uh, going forward is that if you have paternity fraud, it should be similar to the rest of the frauds so where you can go in, uh, file your claim, uh, show your proof, and then not only should you be able to recover whatever monies and expenses, including child support, that you're out of, but there ought to be some kind of damages and compensatory punishment, uh, uh, some fines imposed. Yeah, how about legal expenses that these guys have to incur uh, to prove they're not the father? Yeah, well, it's a shame. You've got uh, men who have to spend out uh, tens of thousands of dollars to prove a fact, and then once it's proved that the fact uh, is true, they're not able to go back and recoup uh, not just their expenses, but the dollars that they put out under, under, under fraud, uh, this woman is, has uh, uh, forced you to pay monies that you shouldn't have been paying. But yet, most states are, are making it difficult for you to go forward and recover your dollars. So this paternity fraud is just rampant. And then uh, it doesn't help that the federal government, and we need to make some calls to your favorite congressman, uh, your listeners out there, because the federal government has tied in voluntary acknowledgement of paternity to dollars. So they have dollars, millions of dollars, that they tie into uh, making sure that if you're at the hospital and you sign that piece of paper 
uh, if you're not married, you sign that piece of paper saying that this is my baby and I admit that I'm the father, it is tied to Department of Human Services dollars that they get from the federal government through the Title 40, uh, Title IV uh, funds so that they will claim that you ought to be able to say this is my child and the state should be res uh, uh, restricted from filing uh, any other kind of test uh, requirements on you. So if you say and sign that voluntary acknowledgement of paternity, then the state can't come back and say, well, okay, that's all well and fine, but uh, we just want to do this, uh, this DNA test just to be sure. You can't do that without putting at peril the tens of millions of dollars that the federal government is given the Department of Human Services. So they're helping to uh, to create the little racket that's going on. It's starting with the federal government. They're saying we're not going to give you the dollars that are due you for your human services, dollars you're entitled to. We're going to punish you if you try to make sure that uh, – that child's daddy is really that child's daddy. Outrageous. Crazy. Outrageous. Let me get Lori in here. Lori, you're on with Tennessee Representative G.A. Hardaway. Hello. Hi, Mr. Hardaway. Hi, Tom. Afternoon, Hi. Lori. How are I you? I love it. I love it. I wish everyone, I wish, I wish. I, I am a mother of two. Um, my fiance and I have been together about seven years. I wouldn't care in the slightest. Um, not only would it, I, I, you know, I mean, it, it takes away the that option for a woman to start acting crazy and immature in the future and, you know, throwing around, maybe that's not even your kid. And it sounds dumb, but how many of us have heard of that really happening in real life? I think messing, everybody. Messing, uh, messing around with paternity, that's not a game. It's not funny. Um, I, I think it's great, um, not only for the benefit of the children, but... Okay, so I'm white. My fiance is uh, Hispanic. Our first daughter is brown. Our second daughter, white, blue eyes. I'm just saying, if it was right there, he wouldn't have to. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I think it could, on the spot, you, no one has to ever wonder. No one ever has to worry because I've had people well, look at me funny. Yeah, uh, And uh, even though yours is the reverse of uh, the incident I'm going to sign, I had uh, a couple that uh, sent me an email and the uh, the father is the one that was disappointed because the uh, the mother they were married and the first child uh, he wasn't quite sure but he said well yeah it it uh, is probably mine and the second child as the child grew uh, you know most children are lighter at birth than they are going to be uh, in uh, adulthood or as a yes. uh, age or a few months and this child just got darker and darker. And after uh, a few months, the guy couldn't keep denying that. You know, you have some self-esteem, some ego problems. You, you just don't want to admit that your woman could have been with another man. Yeah. But it got so, and this, this man was so hurt because he had already established uh, his relationship, paternal relationship with the first child. But it turned out when uh, the second child was, was just started showing African-American features, uh, that he had to admit, that's not my baby. And he had both babies tested, and neither one was his baby. And yet, uh, this woman was still of the mind that she could convince him, even though the evidence was there, DNA and the appearance of the child. She's still lying. Still lying. Oh, yeah, no, that's wrong. Uh, child doesn't look like him. Uh, he's white, she's white. Uh, but he's a little African-American child. And the DNA tests are... are, are coming up with, no, this is not the father, and yet she's still lying. So we've got people out there who will insist on carrying on this foolishness, and it's the children who suffer. The uh, the other excuse that they sometimes use to against the DNA testing is this so-called right to privacy, uh, where uh, you're, you're supposed to say, well, you can't take my DNA because... Uh, uh, it's a funda fundamentally um, right to privacy on what's in my body. Now, once again, we're talking about where do your rights end, start and end as a parent, and the child's rights uh, start and end. 
And I'm insisting that if we're going to be concerned about children, that we've got to talk about children from the perspective of family law. And that means that we got to get the grown folks uh, in line, but it needs to be from the perspective of what's in the best interest of the child. If we can keep that in mind, then most of these laws that we need to change, it would just be common sense because what's in the best interest of the child, does it, we, we don't care how it hurts your feelings. Right. Laurie, That'd thank be- you. Thank you for the call. I, I, I know you have to run, and we're going to have to take a break. But finally, uh, Representative Hardaway, we have people writing in who want to get a copy of your bill so they can send it to our local representatives in California and local representatives in all the states where our show is heard. Uh, where can people see it? Is it on your website? Where can I direct people? Does it have a bill well, number? Uh, there is a bill number. And the uh, the bill for paternity testing is House Bill 2964, 2964. That's the House Bill number. So it's HB 2964. Now, there's a second uh, piece of legislation that speaks to the paternity testing before any child support issue is ordered. And that would catch some of the current uh, lines that are going unchallenged out there. But the one for paternity testing at birth is House Bill 2964. And if you just go on the government website and go to the legislative, the House uh, legislative uh, uh, part, then you'll be able to pull it up. And I would certainly uh, welcome any opinions and observations that you have on the bill. And you can email me at rep.ga.hardaway, H-A-R-D-A-W-A-Y, at legislature l-e-g-i-s-l-a-t-u-r-e dot state s-t-a-t-e dot t-n dot u-s rather than the uh, email address but uh, i'd be happy to get all of the input those of you who need uh, more information my dad's uh, group at dads of tennessee uh, has a website and they offer support for non-custodial parents men who are custodial parents uh, just a, uh, a lot of information that could certainly help California as we try to go forward and develop a better world. Well, Representative yeah. Hardaway, you, you may have been the start of something here in California and in Texas and in the state of Washington and Oregon and many of the other places where our show is heard, Nevada. We're going to post your information on our website. You will hear from our listeners, and we will follow up with you to see how your bill is doing. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to discuss this, and once again, it's all about developing a better world for the, for the children. Let's keep the children in mind. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. That is Tennessee House Representative G.A. Hardaway, a Democrat. And uh, we'll have all his information on our website, and you'll be able to check it out. Now, the question, of course, is why is it that uh, other states aren't doing this? Where are all the politicians? Does anybody have the guts to step up to the plate and sponsor a bill like Representative Hardaway? Probably not. Your call's coming up. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Can you name five things women are good for? Yes. Cooking, cleaning, <laughs> ironing, packing my things when I leave town. <laughs> Preparing my documents for when I leave the country. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. All right. Somebody actually is trying to get a bill passed that would require DNA testing for every live birth. So these sluts and whores can't get into your wallet without... Stone cold proof that you are the father of their kid. What do you think about this? 1 800 5 800 Tom. We don't talk about politics on this show very often. But every now and then, something political is going on that affects the guys who listen to this show. If this is something. Why can't we do this in California? Why can't we do this in Texas? Why can't we do this in Washington? Why can't we do this in Oregon and Nevada? Why can't we do it? Makes no sense. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Angelo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Do we have him potted up? 
All right, we'll go look for him and say hi to Carly in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Hello. Hi, Dom. I completely agree with this. I, you know, I'm married and I have, you know, I don't have any kids, but, you know, I would be willing to take a DNA test. I, you know, my, I have four brothers who, two have had to have paternity testing done and who have gone through and it cost them hundreds of dollars to go through paternity testing and all this stuff. And I think it's ridiculous because, two, you know, one of them ended up finding out that, you know, it, it wasn't his kid. And, you know, he had been basically raising it for two and a half years, you know. And then the other one, you know, found out later, like right after the baby was born. But this girl swore up and down, both of these girls did, it's your kid, it's your kid. And, you know, and one of them actually fell for it, you know, and signed the birth certificate. And once, you're, once you sign that birth certificate, you're kind of stuck. Everybody should refuse to sign that birth certificate until they've got DNA evidence. Everybody. I completely agree with you. And I would I would be a supporter of that here in Oregon. Because, you know, I'm I'm tired of, you know, I have, with my four brothers, you know, the, just the crap that they've been through. And I'm like, you know, there's no reason that if you have any doubt that you should not do it. Any doubt. Before you sign that. I think you should do it whether you've got doubt or not. You have no way of knowing. You have no way of knowing if she'd been for, been for 10 minutes one day. Uh, exactly. Just, just kind of made a mistake. You have no way of knowing. Well, I went to a party and decided that she needed a drink. And, you know, it, it was like, well, it was just one time. You know, it only takes one time of stupidity. You know, so I think I, if it, I would very much lobby for that bill. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up and send it to my representative. Excellent. That's what I want everybody to do. And uh, we're going to put that up on our website. Uh, we'll have all of the details. So you can uh, send that link to uh, everybody, your senator, your congressman, all your Definitely. state legislators, city where you live, whatever. Definitely. But thank you, Tom. I'm a listener. Thank you, Carly. Now, here in Los Angeles, it's... Uh, County of Los Angeles that uh, is doing all this uh, stupid enforcement activity. Uh, it is sexist. It is frequently a violation of your rights, basic property rights, uh, the tyranny of your government taking money from you and apportioning it to itself beyond the taxes you already pay and to some broad who may not even be the mother of your child. I, I don't I, I can't believe people aren't angrier about this. I, I can't. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, that's our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, hi Tom. Hi. Um I I think what the the government doesn't want to pay for all the welfare cases that they'd be paying for if the dad stopped paying. Well, I'm sure they don't. And what I say to them is, uh, here's the deal. I think there'd be a lot less out-of-wedlock births if these whores and sluts couldn't come back and say, he, he's the father, he's the father. If, if they didn't have that option available to them, how many of these kids would actually be born in the first place? Yeah, I, I don't. I think they'd be a little careful on their birth control if they, if they knew that the, the dad's not going to be paying and the state doesn't, that'd be a lot of money to pay the state. Right. Unbelievable. Right. Jeez. Sounds good. Hey, can you take me out Kobe style? Yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Uh, here we go with Sarah in Portland, Oregon. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Um, I, I just say I'm the exception to the Portland rule. Really? <laughs> We're not all fat here. Is that so? It is so. Most women in Oregon who are not fat, they move to other states. Yeah. Well, I I like Oregon. It's a beautiful state. This you know, there is true. There is a lot of fat people here, but I am not one of them. Yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Anyways, I just want to call and say I'm so glad that someone is finally doing this. It is about time that, you know, men that aren't fathering children that should have to stop paying for it and have women have to prove the fact that, that the man they're saying is the father is the father. And this should be something that people try to get going all over the country. 
Well, I, I agree with you. This should be in every state in the union. Mandatory yeah. DNA testing. Mandatory. That's it. If you don't have DNA evidence on file, you can't put anybody's name down as the father. That's it. Simple. Right, exactly. I mean, men shouldn't have to pay for women being slept and sleeping around with everybody and not knowing who father of their children are. Right. So, anyway, so... Uh, Haven't we learned out. anything from oh. years of watching Maury Povich? Come on. Oh, I know. Gosh, just turn on Jerry Springer and see the, you know, the examples or anywhere on any of those kind of shows where, I mean, come on. Yep. It's about time we do something like this. So. I agree with you. All right. Will you blow me up, Tom? Yes, I will. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Avi on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, uh, I'm not going to waste your time with uh, pleasantries because I know you're not doing all that great uh, with this legislation that they're proposing here in Los Angeles. Hey you there. Yeah, well, they're not proposing any legislation. That's that. That's no, what I'm, I'm talking sorry. about. I misspoke. The uh, the enforcement that they're talking about here in Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. But. Um, what uh, what this Tennessee representative is proposing makes me so happy. I almost want to move to Tennessee, but that's not going to happen because I like Los Angeles too much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm a, I am a libertarian and therefore believe in the fundamental right to privacy. But I think that the right to privacy ends with a child's need for information about medical history, uh, knowing 100% what your medical history is. It is of just is is invaluable. And as a libertarian, you should also be concerned about the illegal, I believe, illegal, unconstitutional transfer of wealth from innocent people to sluts and whores. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six six. No, pal. Man, you like the dopest cat on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get a hood pass from me, so anybody who comes to the hood, I got your back. Huh? I love that. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Amanda, hello. Yes, hi, how are you? Great. I love your show. I listen to your show all the time while I'm at work. Thank you. <laughs> You're very entertaining. Um, now, I'm in a situation. I'm three months pregnant, and um, I don't know who my child father is. It's only two possibilities. Uh, my point that I'm trying to make is that I'm totally against, you know, women not knowing who their father is and just saying that, you know, it's just one person. Me personally, since I'm in this situation, you know, I know, you know, things about it. I told both parties, I told men A and man B from jump, you know, I was honest with, you know, both, both guys, you know, um, and I just don't think it's right for a woman, you know, she know in her heart that she don't know who the child father is. And she just, you know, pinpoint, she, it, that, that's just not right at all. That's why I was honest with both of mine, you know, both the men. That is and unusual. That, I'm sorry? That is unusual. Did either one of them get upset that there were uh, more than one possibility? I mean, they, they was upset, but... But us three, we know what the situation was, what type of relationship, you know, I had with both parties. So it wasn't like I was married to one of them or was, like, in a relationship for, like, 10, 15 years and, you know, stepped out. It's just we, we, <laughs> I can't say our situation is weird, you know, but, yeah. One was, matter of fact, one was kind of, you know, surprised. Um, the other one... It was, I don't really know. I really don't know. But they didn't seem like they were mad per se. They probably was, but they didn't show me, you know, that emotion of being upset. So. Wow. Wow, wow. Well, good luck, Amanda. Unusual honesty from a female. My gosh. The Tom Likas Show.